Hey gang, so I do sincerely apologize for that weird dab and try to ending epically the Gen Chem boot camp, but I actually have one more video before the end, so just kind of hopefully forget about that, and let's talk just a little bit more about energy diagrams. This is going to be a short video, but what we're going to do here is something we will do periodically throughout organic chemistry, so it's kind of a weird way to think about things, at least it was for me at first, but kind of jump on board with this video and kind of pay attention and give me just this little bit of extra attention before we move on into organic chemistry one. Okay, so we can use energy diagrams to compare the energy of molecules, which I know you know that, uh, but for whatever reason, I've always had a little bit of uh, trouble with students, you know, talking about them in this way. So I want to just get it out there first, kind of plant the seed in your head. So when I mention stuff like this in the future, uh, hopefully we don't have any, you know, problems thinking this way. Okay, so this is a little bit into the future, but I'm just going to draw a few structures like this. And you do not need to know, you know, anything about these carbons, just that they have a positive formal charge. So if you think about it, you know, carbon comes in with four valence. So if they have a plus one, right, we should have in every scenario minus three, right, plus one they should be one bond deficient, right? So if I show you this carbon having one less hydrogen would give it a plus one charge. This carbon right here having one less hydrogen would give it a plus one charge. And then this carbon right there needs, has no hydrogens, that would give it a plus one charge. So what I kind of want to explore here is if I put these on an energy diagram, how would I, I don't have any concrete numbers to associate a certain amount of energy with each of these, right? But what I will tell you is, this is the most stable. This is the least stable. And this is in the middle. Okay? So I'm, I, if I gave you this task to show me, you know, qualitatively, without any numbers, show me how to represent this on an energy diagram, right? And we'll just say, uh, molecules down here, it doesn't matter. I just want you to kind of rank them in a hierarchy. So think about, we have to think about this. Most stable, nature likes to be stable, which is low energy, right? Because high energy things, they're crazy, they react. So if something is the most stable, it's uh, it's weird, it has less energy, right? It's it's more okay, it's, it's more copacetic, right? So if I'm just gonna put these guys down here, most stable means I'm going to put that molecule right there, low. Then that means least stable means high, reactive, has a lot of energy, wants to do something with it, right? It, that will be up here. Then since this one's in the middle, I just have to make sure he's between the two I've already ranked. And that's how I would do that. For whatever reason, and I even thought this way too, since you think this is the best, you almost want to put it up higher, but you just need to think nature likes stability, low energy. So if something's lower, more stable, you put it lower on an energy diagram. Almost think of like an exothermic reaction, right? You start high and you end low because you're giving energy off, right? We don't, molecules don't like to have energy. They like to just be stable and low energy. 